International Day of Business Breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Just like the name is, so shall be your encounter this morning. You are breaking through in every aspect of business you are involved in. In the name of Jesus. Our prophetic declaration for the month is empowered to go about my father's business. Empowered to go about my father's business. And beginning from this service, we are continuing our Sunday service teaching on engaging the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for supernatural breakthrough. Part two, engaging the manifestations of the Holy Spirit for supernatural breakthrough. The Holy Spirit is given for the breakthrough of man. To enhance breakthrough in every area of our lives. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The operations of the Holy Spirit. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Is ultimately for the breakthrough of man. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. He said, For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our life is for our profiting. To enhance our life, to enhance a life of profiting, not losses. Not losses. Not, not pain. No. Not to suffer shame, but for our profiting. In Isaiah chapter 48, and verse 17, Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, am the Lord thy God, which teached thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go. I'm the Lord. I delight in your profiting. I teach you. And how do I teach you? I teach you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How be it, Jesus said, how be it, it is expedient for me to go. If I do not go, the comforter will come. How be it, when the comforter comes, the Bible says, he shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. He will show you things. Hallelujah. He will teach you. He will show you things. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that shall he speak and he will show you. He will show you how to profit. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit for the profiting of man in every area of life. Hallelujah. And that's why we must covet his manifestation in our life. We must covet his ministry in our lives. You cannot be taught by the Holy Spirit and end up a failure in any area of life. No. That's why all through this month, we are engaging and having an encounter with the Holy Spirit to tap into his manifestation in diverse areas of our lives. There is no way a child of God can make meaning in life without the help of the Holy Spirit. Without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in his life. We are in a world of competitions. We are in a world of evil. No matter how strong you are, there's somebody stronger than you. No matter how connected, humanly connected you are, somebody is more connected than you. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody is more connected than you. Many years ago, I was to pick a job and then we went for interview. And I just got the notice just a day before the interview. In the evening of, you know, the day before the interview. And that was not my field of study. 
I didn't even know what the interview was going to entail. I just got a notice, which was not comprehensive enough. So, I just went. As I got to that company, I saw a lot of people waiting and all that. So, I just, I thought they came for another business. It was a big company and all that. So, at a particular time, the human resource manager came in and made an announcement that all those for so 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 schedule for interview for so 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 please move to this hall and I saw everybody following me praise the name of the Lord and we got there as we got there the officials came in come and see all manners of letters from all manners of places with all manners of logos And come and see all manners of credentials. You know, those they hold like a whole book. Some people certificate, all manners of certificate. The certificate that they have used cello tape to cello tape it, that has gone through so many applications and all that. And mine was just very fresh. Just one or two, two, three papers I brought. So when I saw people holding all manners, I moved away for them so that they won't kill my feet. Praise the name of the Lord. And then after some time, they did announce that in the next 30 minutes, the written test will come up. I didn't know we were going to write any test anyway. And I saw people, you know, some people are customers to come in for that interview. So I saw them discussing and discussing. I'm sure they will bring social questions and all that, all that. They were talking. All the things they were saying, I didn't know anything. So I move away from them again. But the short and long of that story was that at the end of that interview, massive people and all that, I got that job. So it couldn't have been by anything. The help of the Holy Ghost, as soon as we enter into that exam hall, people were just writing and writing. I was wondering what they were writing. I was wondering what, I knew what I wrote that day. It was not more than one page. One page. Because some people were just writing and writing and writing. Hallelujah. We are living in a world of all manners. Competition in business, connections, all manners of things. We need the Holy Spirit. That's the one that can stop you from a a life of struggle. Believers are primarily empowered to go about their father's business. How do you think I will not be about my father's business? You want to be empowered? You want to enjoy God's power in diverse areas of life? You must have a stakeholder's mentality. It is my father's business. It is my father's business. Stop treating God like dog. Stop putting God last and you are one to be first on the earth. It won't work. My father's business until you approach the things of God as my father's business. You can't get the best of God in your life. So primarily speaking, The reason why we are empowered first and foremost, first and foremost, is for the kingdom matters. To go about our father's business. And then any other area of life. To go about our father's business. Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. This is Jesus speaking. When his parents were looking for him, and the three days, Johnny, They went and came back and finally they saw him. They saw him in the temple. And then they asked him, oh, this, oh, you have suffered us. They started sharing their experience. We have been looking for you and all that. Jesus now said, "Ah, where else do you expect to find me? What else do you expect to see me doing? My father's business. 
My father's business. My father's business. He was settled there. He was, he was, he, he, he was fulfilled being there. Not coming to church, just jumping in and jumping out. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the Lord. When it comes to kingdom matter, how do you respond to it? How do you respond to it? Some people, when it comes to circular matters, oh, they are very active. They are very prompt. Very prompt. He has a village meeting. One hour before the time is there. He's there waiting for everybody. But when it comes to church matter, he will calculate and calculate. He said, today in our communion, by this time, I will go. By this time, they should be trying to either round up or so at least make I just meet something, make I just enter, shock the communion, they go. That's how they handle God's matter. One of their friends is doing party. Ah, they are there two hours before the time. I just come to see what I feel do. To help if I have anything. He knows us will be friend. But when it comes to church matters, it's not there. Outreach is not there. The raid is not there. Praise the name of the Lord. And even when it comes to church, comes to church one hour late or one and a half hour late. And before they share the goodness, he's running out and walking out on God. Walking out on God. I don't take the communion. I'm waiting to remain carrying back. Are they good? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And how now? I don't go. Walking out on God. Can you walk out on your superior in the office? And you won't lose your job? Praise the name of the Lord. So the things, until the things of God move you, your own thing will not move him. My father's business, that's the primary purpose of empowerment to be effective in the master's business, in our father's business. To go all out in our father's business and be productive. That's the reason for the empowerment. To be fervent in spirit. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Be not slothful in business. But be fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. That's the ultimate. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. God empowers you. So that you can serve him the more. So that you can serve him the best. The best. Hallelujah. That's why the power. That's why the power. He releases the grace when he knows you are useful and you will use it for his kingdom. All the disciples in scriptures, they were empowered to get out on a mission for Christ. If you check through, they were empowered to go, not to sit. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, Luke 9 verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. He gave them what? Power and authority over all devils and to cure sicknesses. And what did they do? Verse 6. Verse 6, what did they do? And let's look at verse 2. Verse 2 first. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. To preach. To preach. To go and preach. Not to sit down. To preach. To go and preach and to heal the sick. Verse 6. And they went out. They departed and went all through the towns. They went round. All through the town. They went to Orumaro. They went to Mechanic Village. They went to Agbasa. They went to Samori. They went to Ekma. They went to everywhere. Preaching the gospel and healing everyone. Everywhere. The power is to go. The power is to go and preach. The power is to share the gospel. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. We see the same thing. After these things, the Lord appointed unto them the 70. 
and send them two by two before his face into every city and place wherein he himself will come. And then he said unto them, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Can you see? He gave them power and then sent them out and told them the harvest is plenteous, but unfortunately, the laborers are few. Those who have empowered, they are there sitting at home, watching the winds. Ah, the way, way, way that day like this. If you like say, go rain, no, make man sleep small. If you go out any, any time I like now, I could just find one partner, we'll go, go, we we'll go to the street. <laughs> but this kind of rain now for sleep, oh. The laborers are few. The laborers are few. May you be part of these few laborers so that you can take your reward. Praise the name of the Lord. The more committed, therefore, we are in going out about our father's business, the greatest our access to ever increasing empowerment. You want to consistently be empowered. Keep reaching out. Keep reaching out. If you are not tired of reaching out, God will not stop lavishing his power upon you. Keep reaching out. Keep reaching out. Keep reaching out. The more you reach out, the more you are empowered. Because power increases when it is used. Whatever is used increases. Multiplies. In Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 24 and 25. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. There is one that scattereth. He's using it. Scattering the gospel, going out to reach out. He's empowered. He goes using the power, releasing the power from God's wall. There's one that scattered it, and yet it's increasing. It looks like a paradox. You are scattering, and yet the thing is not finishing. Instead, it's increasing. It's increasing. But there's another one that refuses to do anything. There's another one that withhold much more. He's not doing anything with it. He turns to poverty. Poverty means lack. He begins to lack the power because he's not using it. Praise the name of the Lord. So in this kingdom, the more you reach out, the more you are empowered. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, the disciples gathered and then the power came upon them. And what did they do? They began to minister and then souls were turned unto the Lord. Verses 37 to 41. Souls were turned unto the Lord. People were rep repented. Peter spoke and preached a gospel he has never preached before. Peter, who was a timid disciple. Don't forget it was this same Peter that a small girl. He couldn't stand, stand the question of a small girl. Are you not one of them? Peter said, no, 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 no. I'm not one of them. I say, I'm not one of them. At another instance, you, you, the way you are dressing, even your language, is, you, you are one of them. Peter said, I, I, me, I'm not one of them. Eh, eh, eh. Praise the name of the Lord. But this same Peter, after that, the power came upon him. He became bold and declared the gospel confidently, aggressively. And the Bible says, souls were one into the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Souls were won into the kingdom. That's the effect of the power. If you won't stop ministering to souls, the power won't stop flowing. Hallelujah. Each time they gather, the Bible said there was eruption again of power. In Acts chapter 4, verses 29 to 31, they gathered again as they were praying. The power came. More grace was added for more assignment. Praise the name of the Lord. The more you reach out, the more the power keep flowing. The more the power keep flowing. The more the power keep flowing. Hallelujah. We need the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in order to be effective in every area of our lives, especially in soul winning. Especially in soul winning. The manifestation of the Spirit is for us to profit in. The manifestation of the Spirit is for us to profit in. What are the manifestations of the Spirit? In what areas does the Spirit manifest for a 
productive life. Number one, he manifests as the spirit of faith. He manifests as the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, he said, we have on the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So the Holy Spirit manifests as the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The importance of faith to a believer cannot be overemphasized. Faith is the key to a life of fulfillment to every child of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to live a life of victory without faith. Without faith. Everything about the believer is faith. 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 We walk by faith. We live by faith. We got born again by faith. So everything that a believer we access that God has provided has to be by faith. Faith is our ticket into everything that God has promised us. So we need this spirit of faith in order to break barriers. In order to have supernatural breakthrough in every area of life. Faith. That's one of the ministry of the Holy Spirit unto us. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. With the spirit of faith. You can speak and get impossible tasks done. The spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. It's a speaking spirit. We therefore have on the spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. It makes you to speak impossible things. Unthinkable things. And then see them come to pass. And people will be wondering, why is this person talking like this? You are talking from a realm. Empowered from inside. Hallelujah. Empowered from inside. You look at your business and then you'll be telling people, I, I, I'm planning to expand. I will soon expand. And somebody is watching. Expand what? This is what, what does he want to expand? He can't see what you are seeing. So the spirit of faith makes you to see what others can see. It makes you to speak what others people can speak. Praise the name of the Lord. The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. That was what made that small boy called David looked at a big giant called Goliath that the whole nation was hiding from and came to the scene and looked at him. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Bragging against my God. Today, I will bring down your head. I'm sure Goliath, for the first time in his life, he looked, who, who is this aunt? Who is this aunt? Speaking this way, I will break down your hair and give your hair to the fowl of the earth. Small boy. That's what makes you speak what people can't understand. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at the three Hebrew brothers. The king gave a decree. Anyone who does not bow will be thrown into the fire. And the boys laughed in a very sarcastic manner. <laughs> he said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, let it be known to you. We are not ready to bow. Our God will deliver us. And even if he does not deliver us, we will rather prefer to burn than to bow to you. Good day. Praise the name of the Lord. Holy Ghost rascals. Prepared by the spirit of faith. When you are prepared by the spirit of, gain, of faith, you misbehave to the kingdom of darkness and yet cannot be touched. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what the spirit of faith does. It's a speaking spirit. It's a speaking faith. It is a speaking faith. It speaks 
it makes you to be to speak and keep speaking to every situation. Hallelujah. The spirit of faith is a daring faith. It dares situations and circumstances. Say, Satan, shut up there. My God is able. My God is able. Mm. It makes you to take risk with God's backing. As in the case of Daniel. Hallelujah. And the three Hebrew brothers. See, speaking faith. See, speaking faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 32 to 33. What more shall we say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson and Jephthah, of David also and Samuel, of the prophet, who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stop the mouth of liars. That's what the spirit of faith does. It stops the mouth of liars. Lions that wants to swallow up the destiny of man. It stops them. Hallelujah. The spirit of faith. That's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Number two, manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. Isaiah chapter 42 and verses 1 to 4. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, and whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flash shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. And verse 4, very importantly. He shall not fail, nor be dismayed, discouraged, till he has set judgment in the earth, and the eyes shall wait for his law. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. That's the spirit of servanthood. It keeps you going. It keeps you walking excitedly. Hallelujah. The spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. It makes you to enjoy service in God's kingdom. It pushes you all out. You are not tired. You are not discouraged. That's what it does. That's why we need the spirit of servanthood. To serve God with gladness and joyfulness of heart. Hallelujah. The spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. We need it. We need it. Praise the name of the Lord. In In Philippians chapter 2 and verses 5 to 9. Spirit, Philippians chapter 2 and verses 5 to 9. The Bible says, let this mind be in you as was in Jesus. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal to God. But took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in, a, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Let this mind be in you. Let this spirit be in you. This same spirit that was upon Jesus, let it be in you. That's how you can serve effectively. Even though he was God, he didn't struggle with his father. The spirit of servanthood is not contentious. You are not struggling for anything. It's not contentious. Just like disciples in Luke chapter 22, verses 25 to 27, they sat down, they were arguing. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? And all that. And Jesus said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But you shall not be so. Shall not be so. Arguing who is the greatest and all that. 
For he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as him that does serve. That's the spirit of servanthood. For whether is greater, greater, is he he that sit at meat or he that serve it? It's not he that seated at meat. But I am among you as he that serve it. That's the definition of greatness. Not position, not title. The spirit of servanthood is not contentious. It's not contentious. It's not contentious. No. You are just lost in serving God. Everything about you is for God. Let this mind be in you as was in Christ. He do not taught it as properly to be called God, but made himself of no reputation. He made himself. He is the one who made himself. He took that status. He made himself of no reputation. One of the enemies of productive service in God's kingdom is reputation. Where you are too full of yourself. You are so conscious of who you are. Your reputation. In God's heart, we are all children of God. Children of God. Children of God. Children of God. Not uncles of God. Not senior brothers of God. You know, not senior sisters of God. Not aunties of God. We are all children of God. So before God, we are children. If you don't have that understanding, you can't serve productively into his kingdom. You will be too conscious. Some people are too full of themselves. They are so conscious of, of who they are. And so when they come to church, they want to be treated so. They must give you special seat. They must greet you specially. Everything specially, specially. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't know who I am. I'm the managing director of so and so and so. I mean, I mean, so. They are so conscious. Even in worshiping God, they say, everybody, let's, let's clap. They're going to clap. They are too conscious. How, how can somebody like me in such a position just, just be clapping and clapping? Just be jumping. No, 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 no. That's for children. Well done, uncle. And God is watching. Praise the name of the Lord. Reputation. We stop people from getting their blessing. They can't go for outreach because of their reputation. They can't pray with other people because of their reputation. They can't attend home cell because of their reputation. How mean how can I just, just, just sit down with these people and just be, what are they going to say? No, 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 no. I've left that level. I have left that level. Level with fellowship with the brethren. Even Jesus fellowshiped. His disciples were non-entities. We are ignorant men. And Jesus could still fellowship with them. He was not ashamed. But because God has given you that privileged position, then the position God has given you is what you are using against God now. Maybe God has made an error. Praise the name of the Lord. He made himself of no reputation. Of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. When I go for outreach, I go inside those places where nobody will want to go. I mingle with the people. I shake them. Corona can coronize my hand. I talk to them as friends. Because I, I, it could have been me on their side. It's only the mercy of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I speak to them. I, I, I identify with them. And each time they see me coming, all of them come out. Pastor, they come. Oh, Pastor, they come. Pastor, they come. One day, one of them told me, he said, Pastor, he said, the thing where they sweet our body, the way we, they come here, eh? no escort, nothing, nothing. You just come like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Made himself of no reputation. Don't let this operation pass. Let God know he didn't make a mistake for giving you that position. He didn't make a mistake for blessing you. Don't use God's blessing upon your life 
to be a hindrance to your blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. He made himself of no reputation. So the spirit of servanthood, it will push you out. It will make you forget your reputation. But running to please God. Running to please. And when God sees that kind of person, oh, God is ready to lavish his blessing more upon him. Hallelujah. You know, he was not tied to position conscious. Not position conscious. The reason why some people cannot serve God well, they are too position conscious. Too tied to conscious. Too tied to conscious. Who knows? Who cares about your title? God is interested in your labor, not your title. Not your title. I'm, I'm, I'm dicking. So, so, I'm dickiness. As dickens, we need to watch, watch, watch and, and just, I'm elder. I'm pastor. Pastor. There is no title in heaven. It is your effect that determines your blessing. Hallelujah. So the spirit of servanthood, it injects you with the passion to keep going out for kingdom assignment. Not being tired. Doing it joyfully. Not waiting until somebody tell you well, well done. Not waiting until they give you any title. But you are consistent. 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 Some people's zeal has gone cold. Why? Because they didn't give them title. Their zeal just died, just went down. I didn't say them go me or they know I dream me. No problem. I'm not going to do anything here again. I'm not going to do anything. And even if now pastor talk him, make it talk, talk like this. That's why I go sit down, they look them. Who are they them? It's our father's business. They leave me, they don't give me unit leader. Is it make I say that remember? They don't go see me there again. I, in fact, I don't retire. You don't do. Praise the name of the Lord. The spirit of servant will get you excited all the time, with or without position. You are just excited serving God in your secret in the open. That's why we need this spirit. That's why we need this spirit. That's why we need this spirit. So that we won't miss our reward. Come on, shout it louder. Amen. Manifestation of the spirit, number three, is the spirit of might. The spirit of might. It strengthens you. You enjoy supernatural energy. Your body is not breaking down. Your inner spirit is strengthened. Your physical body is strengthened by the spirit. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. And he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Strengthen with might. Both in your spirit and in your body. You are not breaking down. You are not discouraged inside. You are strengthened inside. You are strengthened physically. Just serving God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11 and verses 1 to 2. Part of the manifestation of spirit list said there is the spirit of might. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. So that you can enjoy exploits in every area of life. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. For they that know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. They shall do exploits. The people that do know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. You need strength in order to enjoy a life of exploits. Hallelujah. Strength in the inner man. Strength in the physical. That is one of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. From today, no breaking down for you. In the name of Jesus. Number four, the spirit of judgment. The spirit of judgment. The spirit of judgment. In Isaiah chapter 4 and verses 4 to 5. Isaiah chapter 4 and verses 4 to 5. When the Lord shall have washed away the fields of the daughter of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. And you see, by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Verse 5. 
And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon our assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night and upon all the glory shall be a defense. So God is not only a righteous God. God is not only a God of mercy but he's also a consuming fire. Consuming fire. The word of God is double-edged. So God is double-edged. Hallelujah. He kills. He makes a life. In whatever case, it is required. John chapter 16 and verses 7 to 11. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Judgment. Judgment. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father, and you see me no more. And of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Of judgment. Where he needs to judge, he opens fire. He opens fire. We saw one of those accounts when Paul was trying to preach to one of the officials of the land. And Elimas, the sorcerer, in Acts chapter 13, and verses 8 to 13, he came on the scene trying to block the way, trying to stop the gospel. And Paul, the Bible says, he was wrapped in the spirit, full of the Holy Ghost. He set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full of all subtlety and of all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all, unright of, of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately, there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking to lead by the hand. Instant judgment. Blind for a season. We are not told how short or how long that season. A season can be five years. It can be 20 years. It can be his lifetime. Is he a season of his life? Praise the name of the Lord. Judgment. The Holy Ghost unleashes judgment. Judgment against all sons of wickedness. Hallelujah. Those who just see God doing good things in your life and just you trying to share the gospel and then they are angry and then begin to pursue your life. God will release fire upon them in the name of Jesus. So it's a spirit of judgment to stop every work of unrighteousness. They see you serving God and your business prospering. And they are angry. They are jealous. Angry. And vowed to bring down that business. The God, the consuming fire. We release fire in their camp in the name of Jesus. We have wickedness. But if you are serving God, you are exempted. So we need the ministry of the Holy Spirit in these diverse areas of life. Just to make our life profitable. To make us profitable in everything. In soul winning, profitable. In trading our businesses, profitability. In our family, profit. Everything around our life. To be profitable, we need the operations of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Today is our covenant day for business breakthrough. And I'd like you to know that by this service, your businesses are taking another turn. That amen is not strong enough. That amen is not convincing enough. If it is good right now, it is going to be better. If it is better, it's going to be best. Hallelujah. God's desire for our business is greatness. Greatness, 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 not smallness. Greatness. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God wants to give you what you expect. I don't know what you expect concerning that business. I presume it's great, greatness, enlargement, making a mark. Whatever it is, that is your expectation in that business. God will bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. In these last days, supernatural breakthrough is going to be the core identity of every child of God. 
God has not called us to a life of smallness, but a life of greatness. Praise the name of the Lord. A life of greatness. Whatever breakdown you are encountering now, after this service today, it is turning to breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. God is turning every great mess to greatness for you. God is turning every great mess to greatness for you today in the name of Jesus. Supernatural breakthrough. God wants you to enjoy ear tinkling testimony in that business. Ear tinkling testimonies. Ear tinkling testimonies. In Psalm 110 and verses 1 to 2. Psalm 110 and verses 1 to 2. He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy fools too. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of thy enemies. To rule in the midst of thy enemies. That's what God has programmed for us. Ruling in the midst of our enemies. That's your businesses excelling even when some may be going down. Dominion in that field of business. That's your portion. That's your portion. Hallelujah. In Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, he said he will make your business an attraction. An attraction. So much so that people will be streaming to know your secret. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And let him teach us his ways, the way, because we know this man, we know this woman. We know, we know his situation before in business. But see what is happening. We need to go and learn. We need to follow her. We need to follow him. And he will walk in his path, for the Lord shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So God is using your businesses as a bait to bring people into the kingdom this end time. You will so prosper that people will follow you even without inviting them. If that amen can be louder, your miracle is coming fast. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11, he said, let your light so shine. Matthew 5 and verse 14. Your light will so shine, you will so prosper because you are the light of the world. God wants your business to be a pay setter. A pay setter. Let your light so shine. That men may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Because you are the light of the world. Verse 14. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. God is lifting up your business as a showpiece of his goodness. God wants your business to testify of him. That's why any business represented here today, I decree by the power of God, there's going to be a turn around in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Having said that, we need to know how to encounter this supernatural breakthrough that God has promised in business. Number one, what are the requirements for supernatural breakthrough in business? Carry a breakthrough mentality. You must Carry a breakthrough. Possess a breakthrough mentality. Every issue of our life is controlled from our heart. From our heart. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Keep your heart. That's where the issues of your life is controlled. Those who fail outside, they have already failed inside. Your mentality is what determines your identity. What kind of mentality do you carry concerning that business? Carry a breakthrough mentality. What you will see is what God will make happen for you. Genesis chapter 13 and verses 14 and 15. God said unto Abraham, look up. After Lot was separated from him, look up. Look to the north, to the west, to the south. To the east, he says, as far as you can see, that will I give unto you. As far 
as far as you can see. As far as you can see. Verse 15. As far as you can see. As far as you can see. All the land which thou seest. To thee will I give you. And to your seed. God doesn't have problem enlarging that business. But you must see it before you can have it. That business may look little now. Oh, it is only permitted to begin little, but you are not permitted to die little. A little shall become a thousand. A little. A small one, a great nation. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 verse 22. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Though thy beginnings may be small, but your latter end shall greatly increase. Job 8 and verse 7. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Stop seeing smallness. Stop seeing smallness in that business. Enlarge your coast. Let your mind catch great things in that business. What you see is what you should start behaving. What you see, don't treat that business like nothing. Don't treat it like nothing. They ask you, how oh, Ross, how now? How is everything? How your business? They say, hey, which business? Your business now? Huh? <laughs> that one a business. I beg my brother. You say, Mr. B, play. That one a business. Oh, it's a my business. I think we person just they do just to chop now. Nothing, nothing there there. <laughs> nothing there there. Whatever you find your hands to do, do it with all your might. Give it a serious approach to destroy that reproach. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Don't commonize that business. Stop being myopic. Stop thinking mediocrity. Start expanding your cost. See that business spreading. See yourself making international journeys because of that business. Some people cannot even say amen. Some people's amen cannot even be louder than their neighbors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many years ago, as just an upcoming pastor, I was preaching. I said, I will carry the gospel to the nations of the earth. I'm not going to die a local champion. I didn't have passport that time. Praise the name. I was saying it and I was mentioning the names of nations of the world. There was no any sign there. Nothing. But it happened. Praise the name of the Lord. It happened. So stop saying what is happening now. Say what you can see. Speak into your future. And then it will come to pass. Carry a breakthrough mentality. Push your neighbor and say, carry a breakthrough mentality. Are you sure your neighbor can hear you? Push him, push him hard. Number two, you must engage in seeking the advancement of the kingdom of God. Engage in seeking the advancement of the kingdom of God. Make kingdom service your priority in that business. Hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 3 to 5. 2 Chronicles 26, verses 3 to 5, the Bible tells us the story of Hosea. He was 16 years old. When he began to reign, he reigned 52 years. And then the Bible says, verse 4, he did that which was right in the sight of God according to all that his fathers did. And as long as he kept seeking God, verse 5, the Bible says he kept prospering. He sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding and vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Keep seeking after God. Let your business be involved in anything in the kingdom. Anything in the kingdom. Budget God from your business. Have a budget of soul winning from your business post. Every Sunday, we dedicate so, so, so budget every month for transporting new members into church. Do something. Let your business be linked covenantly to the expansion of God's kingdom. People are building auditoriums, different places on the platform of their businesses. That's why God is prospering them. Get your business linked with kingdom matters. When you keep pursuing after God that way, you will never, never go down. That business will never, never go down. Hallelujah. 
distribute to the necessity of the poor as a budget in that business. And then you see the business prospering, prospering, prospering. Hallelujah. When God is involved, it can't go down. And number three, you must engage in tightening the profits of your business. Any business that is not tightened cannot prosper. Malachi 3, 10 to 11. Tight the profit of your business and then it will never, never go down. Hallelujah. Tight it. That's different from your own personal tight. The, your business is an entity. You are an entity. So connect your business for security, for open heavens by tightening that business and then the business will never go down. And lastly, number four, engage in thanksgiving and joy and rejoicing as a lifestyle. Don't complain. Don't complain. Don't murmur. And thank God that you are even in business. Thank God. After a day's sales and there, was, there is no profit, thank God that at least there is no losses. After a day's business, you experience some losses. Thank God that yesterday there was profit. Tomorrow will be better. There will always be reason to thank God. Never stay and let your head be bowed down and say, oh God, now the business where you say be this. This one a business. God, you to see. This one a business. With all the way I deserve you. Eh? Now so, see, see, I'm see them. See now, if I talk now, you go say I talk God. Praise the name of the Lord. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Those who complain complicate matters. Those who grumble will soon be crumbled. But whatever you appreciate God for, we keep appreciating and we never, never diminish. I speak to that business today. Nothing goes down again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning that business, I command strange open doors for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are partaking of the communion today. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 30, the Bible says, as soon as they took the communion, their eyes opened. Their eyes opened. What is the communion? The blood of Jesus. The body of Jesus. Hallelujah. As soon as they took the communion, their eyes were opened. By this communion today, God will be opening you up to strange business ideas. Strange open doors. Strange step to take. To bring about strange breakthrough in that business in the name of Jesus came with a point of contact right now, lift it up unto the Lord for representing your business or whatever you do. Just hold it in your hands right now as I make this prayer. And all the people in front, you join me in that prayer right now. Put your faith on the line for your own miracles in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by the authority of God's word. And I decree to every business that is represented here, I decree from today, no breakdowns in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak for by the power of God. Because you are a God that has ordained greatness. Isaac sowed in the land. And you prosper him. He went forward and moved forward and greater. Until he became very great. The Isaac order of breakthrough. I release it upon every business now in the name of Jesus. Amen. From today. I command strange open doors for you in the name of Jesus. I command divine connections for you in the name of Jesus. Those who matter in your business, God will bring them across your way in the name of Jesus. Every obstacle against the rising of that business is caused in the name of Jesus. In that business, I decree you will not take a wrong step in the name of Jesus. You will not invest wrongly in the name of Jesus. I command favor. Favor upon that business in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you quote. Anywhere you tender. You send your applications for job. I command favor in the name of Jesus. That business will expand in a strange way before the year is over. You will not lack resources in that business. You will not meet wrong partners in that business. In the name of Jesus. To all, to all consultants, I command open doors in the name of Jesus. To all professionals, I command open doors in the name of Jesus. 
to all traders, I command greater sales in the name of Jesus. Whatever services you render, I command open doors for you in the name of Jesus. From today till the end of this year, you will not lack work in the name of Jesus. No more dryness for that business in the name of Jesus. Lord, by this communion, let there be fresh ideas and fresh inspiration in the name of Jesus. And every business in any financial mess right now, I command a supernatural intervention in the name of Jesus. That business is open for greatness now. Before this month is open, before this month is ended, the kind of profit you have never had in that business, you will have it this month in the name of Jesus. The kind of open doors you have never had, you will have it in the name of Jesus. Receive your breakthrough now. Receive your breakthrough now. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and thank him. It is done. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you and thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Go in praying. peace. This week is blessed for you. Encounter God in a strange way. In the name of Jesus. Nothing goes down in your business this week. You are receiving good news in that business. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Let everyone say, Amen. God bless you.